Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I, I posted this project up on a few different uh, social medias, uh, Instagram, Facebook. I received a few inquiries as to how I did it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick video showing you how I did this. And we're just gonna use Inkscape and Easel today by integrating Inkscape and its ability to access your entire Windows font directory. You can do it with Inkscape and any other program as well because Inkscape will generate the SVG you need of the text. So I'm going to jump over real quick to Inkscape and just get started on this project. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and add text. So I have the Inkscape project open. I'm just going to add my text window by clicking that little A there and just start typing away. And the child's name here is Declan, which works out great because the A in this Minecraft is a creeper. Because other than that, it just kind of looks like Ninja Turtle font. Which is cool. There's other Minecraft ones on the uh, Defonts website. I'll go ahead and link to this one in the video description if you did want to try this font. Uh, and I'll put a link right below that one to the rest of the Minecraft fonts there. Just a search of Minecraft on the Defonts website. So this Minecraft evening is the one that he chose. So I'm just going to select that. And you can see the preview down here below. We can select you know, all the different ones and see in that little preview plane. Pane. So selecting Minecraft Evenings, apply, and now my text is here. And we're almost done. Uh, the problem is if I take this now and save it, it is an SVG file, but this is not an SVG yet. This is still editable text. I can actually come over here and type new letters and it just puts them in, which you can't really do with an SVG. So make sure your spelling is right before you do this next step. Otherwise, you got to kind of go and redo all this again. But now with my text selected, we can go ahead and grab it like that and do object to path. So you're going to select path up here, object to path. And that will change it from an editable text to discrete letters. Now you could move those around and all that stuff. Um, but really to prove that you have a vector, another nice thing I like to do is just double click one more time and you can see all the nodes in here. So now we're in the node editing tool. You can actually just use the select function up here and use the node editing to see that as well, or just like I always do, double click on it. After we have that, we do have discrete nodes, which means we have discrete vectors, and we can save this as that Declan Minecraft.svg file. Now I'm going to go ahead over here into Inkscape. And I can import the SVG. And if we want to resize this, which we do, uh, because my stock here is actually 48 by 24, a, a uh, actual quarter sheet of quarter inch MDF, I'll adjust that a little bit more perfectly to the actual thickness of my MDF at 0.248 inches. And this sign, I want it to be a total of 36 inches wide. So I can grab it here and just start you know, resizing it, but that kind of skews the aspect ratio and you have to kind of work with it to get it back. And, and that's not fun, right? So I'm gonna undo that real quick by pressing Control Z, bring it back to the imported size it was. You can also change the shape over here under the Shape tab by typing in a number. And the issue is that does the exact same thing. I've now stretched it way out. I'm going to undo that real quick, select it again. And we can either, in order to keep our aspect ratio locked, we can lock it here uh, and type in a number, 24. But I really want this to be 36 inches wide, right? So I could grab it and bring it to 36. Uh, however, it's the, it's the end result sign that needs to be 36. And I'm going to do an offset around this of half an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this down to 35 because that offset of half an inch will add half an inch to each side. So now my, since I have it locked here, it kept the same aspect ratio and now it's 35 inches wide. So for the next step, I need to, oh, we're going to cut this in if I leave it here as a pocket, right? So let's go ahead and change that to outside of path. And that's how we're going to cut these letters out. Um, but in order to get this outside shape, 
we need to do what's called an offset. So right now we're all set to cut the green if we wanted to just have green letters and put those on another sign or put those directly on the wall with, I don't know, maybe some adhesive or double-sided tape if you didn't want the black backer. But the black backer does help with alignment and makes it a lot stronger since we're only using quarter inch MDF. So we'll jump back into easel here. And what we can do is offset this and it'll basically make a nice little bubble around it. And that's what I'm going to use for that backer. Let's hide that work area right now and make this a little bit wider so it's easier to see this. All right. So in order to make that offset, if I was to take it now, it's you'll see what happens when I do the offset. It's better to just make a copy, Control C, Control V, uh, copy and paste this, and I'll just keep a fresh copy of the uh, original style uh, text up there. So now with that selected of this lower one, either one really, I can enter the offsetter tool, and there's two versions here. In fact, version two honors this toggle down here of millimeters versus inches. So that's why there's a version two. Um, so if you're using Imperial, you can really use either. Offsetter original only uses Imperial and Offsetter V2 uses whichever one you have selected. So I actually want to do this at a half inch offset uh, because I know I like the way that looks from having done this already once. So if I leave Keep Original, it leaves these extra lines in here from the from that first text. But since I have a copy of the one I'm actually going to cut out for the green letters, I can get rid of that original and just have the offset bubbles. So I'm going to go ahead and import this now. So now I've got my bubbles here imported. So I have some areas that in fact I don't want. So it, it bubbled out these, this, and that, which were like uh, internal circles, right? The E and the C are not. Those are kind of internal circles, but only to the black part, only to that backer. Um, so now I can delete these. I'm just going to go ahead and delete these out. So I know I don't, I don't like them there, right? I don't like the, the way that's going to look. Uh, I could go ahead and take my original one here and do an internal offset to kind of get those uh, to still be like little voids here if you wanted to see through these areas a little tiny bit. But they're just so small that it would kind of look awkward, so I'm going to get rid of them. Even these E ones are a little bit awkward, but they're not too bad. So I'll keep those in there. So now I've got these here, and if I cut those, I'm going to have all these weird different little pieces, right? So there's a few ways to get these back combined. Um, I like, personally, to use these apps and the Better Booleans tool. So I'm going to show you that here first. And it shows it here. It's all one color. It's blackened in because it's going to create a pocket. It kind of does that by default. Um, but this is exactly what I want. So I could select it here, but I'm going to show you another option that's a little bit easier to get to for doing this. And in this Better Booleans tool, if you wanted to, let's say, get rid of certain things, um, this exclude function does a great job of that. So go in here and mess around if you haven't used this tool before. Um, right now, if I import it, I'd have exactly what I want, but I'm going to show you one other way to do it that oftentimes works just as well for this sort of a combining or welding pieces together. And that is this combine function, control J or edit and combine. And that does the exact same thing, but it just doesn't make a pocket first. Um, I'm going to go back real quick. So what I just did there was fine. I could have used that. However, if I come into the better, better Booleans one and I import it, it works just the same. I, my outline is the exact same, but it's a pocket by default. So if I change it back to outside path. I'm back in business exactly the same as that combined function up here was. Um, that combined function does disappear if you only have one vector selected. So that's why it's gone now. So keep that in mind. If you try and join stuff using that combined function, you might only have one vector selected. Um, so now we're actually ready to cut these. Uh, all I have to do is put my tabs where I want them to be, put my um, pieces where I want them at on my stock. And we can just cut these out and then go about removing the tabs, um, painting and primering in accordance with the Dave Taylor method of painting uh, MDF. And I'll go ahead and link 
to him in the video description as well. He, I'll link to his Instagram page where his story highlights go over exactly how he suggests primering, prepping, sanding, painting, MDF to get really awesome results. Uh, in this case, the paint that I'm using for the green is flat, so I don't quite get the results that he does on his glossy paintings. On that black background, I kind of do. I did let it get a little bit of orange peel on there by the way I sprayed it, but if you use his method, it, it can come out really glossy, really nice looking. Um, so here we are ready to apply our tabs and get these cut out. Uh, something I've learned is it's better to count off where you plan on putting the tabs before you ever move them around. Uh, because now for this one, if I was to, I'll zoom in a little more so I can grab these yellow pieces here, move these tabs around to where I want them, I'm gonna realize that I'm short. But interestingly enough, if you have an internal tab like this, you can move them. So if you have external ones or internal ones, you can move them around wherever you want to. Sometimes it's not as intuitive where the mouse needs to go to pull them or push them because now, see how far my mouse is away from the yellow? Um, I hope that makes sense. But uh, so you can move them around more than, more than uh, some people realize. So now I've got four, but I really want more to hold the centerpiece. So now I've got to change this to, let's say, seven. It moved my four all around. So I had my four in good position, but now I have to reposition them all again. So that's why I usually go through and count how many tabs I want before I bother positioning them at all. And now I'm good like that. And I could go ahead through and re uh, or continue applying the tabs in here. I'm going to try and avoid this area in between these because it's going to make it easier to cut these out. Um, so I would select a number of tabs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for this letter and move those tabs around accordingly. I'm not gonna do this for all the rest. You guys understand the point. I've already carved this once. I'm not doing it again today. Actually, I just did eight and this is barely hanging on here. So that might be troublesome. So to help that with strength, uh, sometimes I like to add more tabs like that, and it will actually force it to be a little bit wider down below at the bottom area. And that's a pretty neat little um, option to strengthen certain areas like that. Alternatively, you, you could add something like um, this in there if you wanted to strengthen it. And just set the set of zero carve and make sure it's on the surface. And then that'll kind of add this in there as a thicker piece to really strengthen that letter up. Although it does leave a weird jolting out piece there. So choosing where you put it might be kind of important, All right. And then uh, with that piece there, I can actually select the two of these and using that better Booleans tool, Kind of choose what we're going to do here. Oh, because I had it set to zero, it's going to do that. But watch if I change this. If I change that to an actual deep carve, now it doesn't get rid of it, but rather combines them. Pretty neat. So now we can add that back to outside and I've just strengthened that uh, piece there a little bit. Um, so that's kind of beneficial to doing that to certain letters like that E, uh, I think the A, you could do it to the A here as well if you like. And this N is pretty flimsy too. So even you could add uh, that little same sort of concept of that rectangle or other other sections to it and then use that better booleans tool to really weld them in together to discreetly fix your vectors like that. And that's you know beneficial in other areas of, of easel designing as well. Especially with you know, DXFs and SVGs that you're importing in from, from other places. So 
assuming you go through and you fix these little thin areas uh, or leave this as a separate one maybe if you want. Uh, we'll see if it's even going to carve separately. It might not have enough space to fit my bit through there, which it doesn't, yeah. So you might either want to cut that to make it two separate pieces or again, weld that in together to make it um, kind of the same as I did over there on that E and make it a little bit stronger. And depending on what you like, you might do that here for the L as well, depending on what sort of a look you're going for. Uh, personally, I, I think I left a few of these as separate pieces, that E and that N. Uh, but you could, again, weld these together and edit the, the text as you like. We have an hour and 12 minutes to carve it using the default settings, which I think are quite conservative for cutting MDF, which I think we just went down even, even worse on. So we'll change that up to uh, 150 and 30. And since this is a quarter inch, uh, we can get away with a, a full depth pass on this bit. I'm going to use a compression bit. And yeah, we'll do it at 100 to make sure that we don't have any issues with uh, tear out and stuff like that. And here we're down to five minutes to cut this out. Um, so maybe those speeds are a little bit uh, aggressive for your machine as well as that cut depth so you can adjust that accordingly as you need for your machine. But this is how we set up this carved an easel to make that sign. And again, you can do that with any other text that you find online using Inkscape to uh, get that text into an SVG.